Hello and welcome to this CUBE Conversation. I'm Dave Vellante with Rob Strecce, and we're here with Jaspreet Singh, who's the CEO of Druva, and Travis Vihill, the Senior Vice President for Product Management at Dell Technologies. Guys, welcome, good to see you again. Great to see you. Thank you. Hey, we wanted to gather, because you guys have been working together for more than two years now, and we wanted to help our audience understand the, the nature of your relationship, you know, why you're partnering with each other, and we want to unpack you know, some of the innovations that you guys are, are doing. So why is it, that, how did you guys get together? Take us back to the beginning. Yeah, if it's okay, Jesper, I can start and then maybe you can add on. Thank you. So uh, we've been partnering together now for more than two years. And uh, when Dell looked uh, to provide a solution in this area, uh, we chose Druva because by working with Jasper and team, our customers can leverage a proven Cloud native platform, it delivers fast, reliable, and secure backups and re backup and recovery services. And most importantly, it's designed to be scalable, flexible, and easy to use. Um, it provides customers with comprehensive features and capabilities and really enables them to protect their, uh, their cloud data in a way that can reduce TCO, improve operational efficiency, and uh, ultimately enhance cyber resiliency. So, you know, it was really, uh, you know, us working with uh, the best in the industry. Jaspreet, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, we are, I think in fact, we, I think we are almost close to, if not cross really a thousand customer, a thousand joint customer mark to the partnership. So it's been a great partnership overall. Um, and yes, I think as, as uh, you know, as, as the customer, you know, you want, as, as your environment is getting more and more complex as a combination of, uh, cloud deployments, on-prem scale, AI, ransomware, uh, a comprehensive solution offered by Dell, which, in, which includes the, the best of the breed elements of on-premise protection, cloud protection, uh, elements of security oversight put together. Uh, that's the partnership uh, brings together, puts together for a customer, and ultimately the customer wins because they have a, a very comprehensive solution uh, you know, offered to them. Yeah, thank you, Jesper. Travis, why did you decide to partner versus just building it yourself? Yeah, I'll go back to what Jesper said. It really is uh, the opportunity to work with uh, with best of breed. Um, you know, if you look at Dell uh, data protection uh, solutions, uh, we have a portfolio which includes basically software to to secure uh, a customer's data no matter where it lives. Um, that's inclusive of appliances that, that meet the size of, of any organization. And then uh, Dell Apex Backup Services, which provides data protection as a service uh, and it scales on demand and is pay as you go. And you know, I'll expand a little bit on what Jess Breed said, which is uh, the reception to this, this joint offer has just been incredible. Uh, Jess Breed mentioned the, the thousand customers uh, I'll, I'll expand a little bit on that. It's been just two short years. And in addition to those thousand customers, we have secured more than 900,000, 900,000 end users and increased the total data protected over that time period by 12 X. So, uh, we've just, uh, you know, we've just had a very great time partnering with Druva and seen the success in the market. And it, just to, just to both of you, I, I think this is part of the Apex backup services portfolio and really focused on SaaS, being able to protect SaaS-based SaaS data. What are the biggest kind of threats that you're seeing in the market today that organizations have to handle when they're talking about that SaaS data? I'll start and then, I mean, Jesper, it's really the, the expert here, but from, from, from our perspective, um, the issues that customers are dealing with are all about um, increasing automation, increasing efficiency, efficient utilization of IT resources, and ultimately providing the best resilience against cyber threats like ransomware. Uh, you know, I know we all love to talk about generative AI these days, but uh, cyber uh, protection, ransomware protection, uh, remains a top C-level conversation at companies of all sizes. Yeah, if you, first of all, the offering expands from 
all the data on premises, born in the cloud, born in SaaS. It, the, the solution spans variety of applications across multiple clouds. But if you think about the the in general the data protection market, it's been around for thirty plus years. The customers, as they evolve their needs, evolve the need for the reasons of security, the reasons of operational efficiencies, of supporting new applications. Right. That's why they and every time they evolve the need, they want uh, simple, scalable, secure. Then the iterativeness of solution has to go uh, much, much higher on scalability, security. Right. So so far, there's been dominantly two choices in the market, uh, uh, integrated appliance or integrated hardware market, right? Or it's been a uh, pure software only market, right? The Apex backup services offer the third choice, right? Which is uh, um, everything as a service, right? Now, why that is critical is because if you think about cybersecurity or security in general, and if you think about what are the biggest pain point for a security professional today, is not buying one more tool is actually how do they operationalize security? How do they actually operationalize multiple tools as they got, right? And in this world where cybersecurity is getting more and more complex, managing one more tool set, managing one more solution or a platform to manage aspects of cyber recovery isn't the ideal outcome for many, many professionals. They want a simple, easy, secure, fully managed offering, which is what Apex Backup Services offers a choice which will look almost all solutions are going to cloud but it's how you how you operate the solution also matters and a SaaS based approach well lets you get the outcomes you want and the predictable price points you want uh, across the group so any application across the group predictable price points and predictable level of security yeah so you're right travis everybody wants to talk about gen ai we do too but we'll park that for just a moment just read you guys and we were just at uh, AWS reInvent. Druva was the winner of the Global Storage Partner of the Year. So congratulations on that. But of course, at the show, we saw AWS talking about its, you know, backup and recovery solutions and some of the other things that 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 it is doing. So I'm curious, how do you guys differentiate from the sort of what I'll call vanilla cloud offerings, whether it's Amazon or Google or 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 Microsoft, Azure? What do you guys bring to the table in your stack that's that's unique and differentiable? Yes, I think com competitive modes or uh, or differentiation or uh, value proposition takes you know sometimes fifteen years to form, right? Uh, uh, as I mentioned in my last statement, like look, com the the world has many good choices when it comes to software first models or or hardware first models or or, or integrated solutions, right? We we, we Druvana leads the market by offering a pure play SaaS solution, which is unique and offering, right? So what AWS has done a very good job of with their backup offering is snapshot management across a variety of assets within AWS, right? But the, the majority of world is very uh, very hybrid or very uh, multi-cloud or very fragmented in how they consume multiple software and services. And as they deploy multiple applications, multiple places, uh, they uh, at least you know a good portion of the world want to manage these outcomes much much more simply, easy, and and efficiently. Which is where a SaaS model comes in uh, a, a, as a preferred model for those set of customers. It's not a solution designed for all, but those customers who don't want them in the in the game of architecting their own solution, building their own solution, right? They want to have the easy button uh, and a scalable button. Uh, Druva is the leading choice, uh, you know, for that. Yeah, and Jess Reed, I think you know it's always good to take it back to a, a customer example that illustrates that. Uh, the one I'm thinking about is the Illinois State Treasurer's Office. Um, they uh, they were looking for a solution to safeguard uh, Illinois citizens' personal information. They wanted to protect against uh, cyber threats. They wanted to back up sensitive data in the cloud and really pre up IT, uh, their IT team to focus on innovation and less on managing backups. And with uh, Apex Backup Services uh, built on, on Druva technology, they were able to modernize their infrastructure. They're actually safeguarding $50 billion worth of assets uh, and large volumes of sensitive data. And in the process, they reduced the amount of time spent managing backup processes by 80%. And 
uh, allowed the IT team to benefit from automation, simplified data management, and really streamlining streamlining what was previously a time a time consuming process. Nice. Thanks for sharing some of the, the customer input. You know, Jespreet was just talking about some of the multi cloud complexity. I'm curious about a couple of things there. To the degree that you're developing joint products, and I wonder, Travis, is there is there an analog in this war, in, in this space to like Project Alpine, which became the common storage layer, you know, across clouds, we call it super cloud. Is there an analog uh, in the, the data protection uh, uh, sphere that you guys are, are driving? Yeah, we see uh, we see data protection as a, as a key part of you know one of uh, many things that that customers would like to utilize Dell services both on premises and, and in the cloud. So being able to offer a hybrid or multi cloud experience uh, based on you know un common underlying Dell services is is something that has really resonated with our customers, and uh, you know I think it's a it's a great example of Dell making sure that no matter where our customers are choosing to deploy, they have a solution for primary, uh, primary storage, unstructured storage, uh, object storage, and of course, data protection. Yeah, and Jasper, when you're powering this Apex backup service or services, when, when you look at this and you look across all of the different, you know, all those uh, impressive numbers, 900,000 end users, that you're protecting, and when you start to look at all of this, is the vast majority of what you're being seeing on a daily basis is people trying to recover from things like ransomware that they've gotten through their Office 365, or is it bad SQL uh, where they actually just have to do the you know traditional, hey, I I dropped the table that I shouldn't have dropped. What are the kind of use cases that customers are using that really drive this service? and the usage of the service? It's a great question. I think the nature of data protection is changing overall. Uh, if you think about information security, there are sort of three dominant pillars, right? High availability, unavailability, um, confidentiality, and, and um, data integrity, right? As, as three pillars for, like, as, as data more and more goes to cloud, and as, as the quality of hardware improves, the notion of high availability is is mostly covered through providers themselves, or the notion of high availability is covered through better architectures, better printing, better apps, right? So availability, which is the human errors, the application failures, are still critical, still make a dominant portion, about 40-50% of all recoveries made, but overall reducing in numbers. So 70%, 80% recoveries were always faced, uh, always be because of a human error or a machine failure. It's becoming less and less critical now. We see almost 30 to 40 percent recoveries are based on a security or a risk incident, right? This could be a cyber incident. Uh, this could be an incident based on an insider threat or a legal or a, a privacy concern they may have on the data, right? So data is becoming a central focus for a lot of different variety of different needs, uh, which are more security oriented needs, right? Uh, and we still see compliance or uh, needs like disaster recovery or compliance needs around replication still being critical. Uh, but what's, as I mentioned, what, what's becoming interesting is the notion of cyber and risk becoming a bigger and bigger portion of why people would think about our, our data protection or data resiliency. Uh, that, that totally makes sense. And just to follow up on that, because I think you hit on a, an interesting uh, topic, which is privacy. And when you have a SaaS based service, what is, what is the talk track that you have with customers when they say, hey, you know, I'm competitive with other organizations. I don't want to be stored in the same bucket or in the same area that their backups are being stored because I don't want, uh, you know, even accidentally or, you know, things happening between the two, uh, uh, I guess you could say, uh, repositories of data. Yeah, I think I think as I said, like uh, customers have uh, yes, customers definitely like the, the, the story we often talk about in, in customers like you know Thomas Edison eventually initially made the made, made the business plan with JP Morgan to put a, a sort of a, a, gen, a, a, a electricity generator set back in the backyard to show on thirty first of December 
how they could power a whole house. And the entire neighborhood came to see light bulbs and light shining. And the next day, Nikola Tesla published an article saying that, look, uh, an elephant could get killed by electricity, uh, the, the AC current, right? And, and so Divi Morgan went back to Thomas Edison and said, look, I like the idea of electric current, but my wife is very, very scared. Why don't you put this genset in your house and I could lease it from you? And then came the idea of GE, right? Leasing electric, electric current as we know it, right? I think for many, many customers, they're extremely proficient in, in running their IT systems themselves, right? But variety of, the, the big majority of cloud need is an outsourcing need. Is an outsourcing need where you want a certain set of capabilities, which are not core part of functionality, to be leased, right, from a vendor which has a core capabilities. So while many, many customers will feel highly confident in their abilities to run their own data sets, many customers wouldn't, right? Which is where the entire Dell portfolio is a winning strategy, where it's an end-to-end -end comprehensive solution saying, look, if you care to run it yourself, great. But as security gets more and more complicated and application stack gets more and more complicated, many customers will choose an option of saying, manage it for me, run it for me, and, 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 and take care of it for us. For those customers, uh, we host their backups. Now, security and privacy is an interesting question, right? We oftentimes ask the customers, like, where are the biggest risk at, right? And, and when the, most customers would say that the biggest risk is at um, source code or customer contracts or stuff like that, right? Now, the notion of data, what's mine, what's my customer's data, and what's my customer's customer data is a very bloody line. It gets blurred over time, right? So, uh, in fact, Druva, one of the things Druva does very well is bring visibility into the integrity of data and, and what what is that data entail from a point of view of analyzing data for sensitive patterns, for who is accessing what, who owns all, what, right? So that level of visibility uh, and level of transparency brings trust to customers and gives them really, really good tools to even do stuff like breach notification. When I lose data, what did I lose? Did I lose my own data? Did I lose my customer's data? Did I lose, did I, did I lose my customer's customer's data? And who should I notify as a result of it? So not only are we investing into managing data extremely simply in security, we also giving customers very relevant tools to analyze and, and visualize their information sets and, and what it entails and what risk can they solve by managing it well. So Travis, this is a perfect time to unpark Gen AI in the conversation. <laughs> um, and, and we've been, it's at Microsoft McKnight, we saw the co-pilots, you know, last week at reInvent, it was, you know, all about the three layer cake and the AI stack and bedrock and and just listening to Jaspree talk about uh, just privacy, you think about compliance, data sovereign, sovereignty. My, I'm interested in, in how Gen AI fits into this data protection space, both as an enabler of some of those important you know, compliance factors and privacy factors, and potentially a detractor from that. I mean, for instance, you know, how do you make sure you, you keep data leaking uh, into the LLM vendors to the extent that you're using it? What is, how should we be thinking about Gen AI in the context of, of data protection? That's a great question. You know, I, I think, you know, looking at it from uh, from Dell's perspective, generative AI is um, a, a workload that we think a lot of customers will potentially start in the cloud or start with a hoster. And because of, you know, data privacy, data sovereignty, data governance issues, um, potentially move to uh, to on premises from a from an operating the the LLM perspective or, or operating the the generative AI infrastructure perspective and uh, you know in the conversations with cu customers I, I think it's fair to say they are still figuring out how the you know the data and the storage part of the equation factor in but we do know that it is going to drive and uh, generative AI is going to uh, drive more and consume more unstructured uh, data. And so I do think that we will see a whole new host of generated data or source data that needs to be protected uh, and backed up. 
and stored in in a very secure and um, resilient way. So we see it as a, a tailwind uh, to, to data protection, and we do see that customers are gonna need uh, a multi-cloud and a hybrid cloud approach uh, to data protection for generative AI specifically. Thank you, Trevor. So Jesper, we're out of time, but I'd like to give you the, the last word. You, you can take it, you can, you can follow up on what Travis just said, or maybe put a bow on the entire conversation. Sure, I think Jenny has a very interesting conversation. People would be keen to not only not only predict the information behind the, the algorithm, but they may also want to predict the algorithm itself, which is rapidly changing. I, I believe in a world where there wouldn't be a single LNM, there would be ma many, many medium LNMs, small LNMs, and many LNMs custom built, custom defined for custom problems. Uh, one solution may not fit all the problems and there people will have a variety of needs. Uh, it's also a very, very interesting time for applying large language models or Gen AI for solving very, very complex security and data management challenges. Uh, we poll the customers on what are the top five issues they grapple with on a daily basis. And the issues are around, you know, setting security policies or trying to understand error codes and pass through variety of log messages, understand fidelity of an alert. And Gen AI uh, can be a very, very interesting tool. In fact, Druva launched the whole Druva effort, a co-pilot, to really truly go deep in analyzing the customer situation and giving them a, a giving them a solution to a specific problem they may be facing in deep in their logs or their policies. So um, the world of data is changing rapidly. In fact, the whole conversation around digitalization is a data re-architecture conversation. The, the whole argument of Gen AI is a data architecture conversation. And uh, data is a centerpiece to a, a lot of these different topics and um, in a, in a thinking around how do I protect, manage, and secure this data, which is powering multiple outcomes and security threats is a very, very crucial conversation for the next decade to come. And we're very, very happy, lucky, and proud to part with Dell on this next decade of innovation. It's a great story. Uh, thank you guys for sharing the details of the partnership. Uh, Travis, always good to see you at Jess Breed. We'll see you next week in our Palo Alto studio live. I'm sure we'll continue this uh, Gen AI conversation and cyber resiliency. Really appreciate your time, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, thank you for watching this CUBE conversation. Dave Vellante for Rob Strecce, and we'll see you next time.